With little to no argument, actor and screen legend Steve McQueen was given the title King of Cool for good reason. His dedication to realism and screen presence has left a mark on Hollywood revered to this day due to his obsession with speed and danger. His love of racing would often attract him to projects that would allow him to express that passion. He loved being on the edge. I mean, he wasn't happy unless you were right on the edge of crashing and burning or winning. McQueen's legend would be cemented in 1968's action crime thriller, Bullet. Bullet tells the story of San Francisco detective investigating the murder of a mob witness killed while under his protection. The film has been noted as being one of the most influential car chase films in cinema history. Due to his background in car and motorcycle racing, McQueen wanted to avoid the old method of filming car chases, still being used in Hollywood at the time of rear projection while the actors sat in car shells in a soundstage. To help achieve this, McQueen brought in English director Peter Yates, who had grabbed attention with the British crime drama Robbery, which he directed the year prior that featured an adrenaline, fast-paced opening chase scene shot for real on the streets of London. I bet you're a perfectionist. Well, I try to do a good job, you know, I don't, I try. With crew now in place and the film greenlit to go into production, being co-produced by McQueen's company Solar Productions, Bullet would commence shooting in February 12, 1968, investigations into the death of a witness he was in charge of protecting. In keeping with his desire for realism, McQueen brought in actor-stunt driver Bill Hickman to be the number two man in this chase he wanted to shoot on the streets of San Francisco. McQueen and Hickman worked closely together in designing the chase, as both brought their own personal expertise into the choreography. In the beginning, we felt that we should start off working in close harmony at a racetrack so that Bill Hickman and myself would be used to working close to each other at high speed. Hickman had been a close friend to actor James Dean who he was following on the day of his death in a fatal car crash as he was the first person to arrive at the crash site and pull Dean out from the wreckage. Hickman had an extensive acting and stunt career in Hollywood, having worked on such famous car chase films such as Vanishing Point, The French Connection, and his final acting performance in The 7-Ups, which almost mirrored his performance from Bullet before his untimely death in 1986. With a build-up intention, we the audience are treated to a jazz fusion style score by Argentinian composer Lalo Schifrin, who had gained fame for his theme score to the Mission Impossible television series. It's a famous chase. Peter Yates did a great job. And he did ask me for music for the chase. But there are four minutes of music before the chase. The director says, you have to have music here. No, we're going to abrupt, abruptly cut it. According to Peter Yates, McQueen insisted on having his face seen as much as possible inside the car and through the window during the driving to show his involvement in the chase. With an abrupt cut of the music score, we are bombarded with the sound of the black car screeching and smoking its tires as it tries to escape. For the high-speed action to take place, the choice was made to obtain a set of high-performance V8s to be driven on the steep hills of the city, where torque was going to be needed, along with reliability to perform the demanding stunts. Production wanted a pair of vehicles that would meet this demand, and found them in two late-model muscle cars that were ultimately selected. A 1968 Dodge Charger RT and a 68 Ford Mustang 390 Fastback were to be these two cars. Equipped with a Ford FE 390 cubic inch engine, 320 to 335 horsepower and a top speed of 130 miles per hour, the Mustang had a generous performance package offering that made it a suitable choice for the film. A 440 cubic inch Magnum engine, which had an output of 375 horsepower and a top speed of 132 miles per hour and was selected in the triple black color scheme with its tail stripes deleted. Though weighing in at just over 3,500 pounds, the Charger left the Mustang at a somewhat disadvantage in power and speed oversteer issues during the chase that cost the production a remote camera setup that was destroyed upon impact. The footage seen the same corner the Charger had its accident and skidding off point with cameras mounted outside and in both cars. McQueen and Yates wanted to get the audience as much into the chase as possible and allowed them to be part of the ride. The chase now finds its way down the steep slopes of Taylor Street as the cars begin jumping off the asphalt as they descend down from it used as a traffic control car in order to allow for greater safety at intersections. The infamy of this era was not lost on even The Simpsons, who included the green VW in its homage to Bullet in one of its own car chases, along with the inclusion of even the falling hubcaps trope. It has been argued that the hubcaps of the Charger and Bullet. The chase continues on with the driver of the Charger growing. It is here the chase grows tighter as the Mustang is closing the gap and we start to see cinematographer William A. Fraker shine. 
The cars now enter a much wider type of road and no longer need to rely on static pedestrian shots as much as before as the camera car now takes over. Fraker and his crew keep up alongside in a special camera car built by Pat Hustis that would travel in speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour to follow the action. Hudger and Mustang squaring off on the busy open roads. A setup queen performs a slide while riding a BSA 750 on the busy road, forcing Mustang to skid off onto the ways of cutting into your doubles, a ways of not getting too close to the car because you might see that the man driving is not Steve McQueen. Underneath, in order to place the camera when needed for close ups to film shots on Steve driving. With only minor adjustments to the actual cars used in order to take the stress and pressure this high chase required. Both the Charger and Mustang are taken to the mechanical and structural limit of racing right under the camera crane, adding to the frantic speed being displayed. It is by this stage undoubtedly clear that the two vehicles selected have been well chosen, was often cast as heavies and tough street cops due to his short, rugged appearance. Released on October 17th, 1968 and was the fourth highest grossing film of that year, bringing in over $42 million on a $5.5 million budget. Originally based on the novel Mute, witnessed by Robert L. Fish about a New York lieutenant placed in charge of the protection of a mob witness, Bullet had become Steve McQueen's pet project where he had a lot of control of the casting and production given his company Solar Pictures co-produced the project along with Warner Brothers. McQueen was often disagreeing with Warner Brothers, who wanted the film shot on a studio lot, yet McQueen insisted and got his wish that it be filmed entirely on location. He often got into conflicts with executives who he would kick off the set when they would visit and refuse to take their calls when asking about the production. The city of San Francisco was chosen as the mayor of the city was keen on bringing in Hollywood interest and as such McQueen and director Peter Yates were given enormous freedom of the city with streets and roads blocked or closed to allow filming and other locations such as hospitals and police stations were available to production. In a promotional agreement, the Ford Motor Company gave two late model 390 GT Fastback Mustangs for use in the film and the chase. The cars were modified as suspension, brakes and the engines were altered in order to take the punishment they were to undertake for the filming. In addition, two Ford Galaxy sedans were offered for use in the chase, though they were found to be too heavy and lacked the power needed to meet the demand of the steep roads and jumps of the city. The producers instead chose to purchase two 68 Dodge Charger RTs, both of which only required minor modifications to their suspension for use in the chase as they were equipped with 440 big block Magnum engines. The cars were modified by race car builder and driver Max Pachowski. Although he did do a number of the driving scenes in the film himself and was key in the creating of the choreography, Steve McQueen did not do all the driving as some of the more hairy turns and jumps were done by stunt performer Bud Eakins, who McQueen had gotten to become friends with due to their shared passion for motorcycles. Eakins had worked with McQueen before as his stunt double in 1963's The Great Escape, performing the now famous motorcycle jump. Eakins was brought in as the insurance company was not comfortable with McQueen undertaking some of the more riskier stunts of the film and insisted on an alternative driver when needed. One of the giveaways when McQueen is driving and when Eakins is standing in for him is when the camera... The bullet was shot on Ariflex cameras on 35mm print and Ariflex cameras were chosen as they were some of the smaller, more lightweight cameras available at the time that made them the better option to use mounted within and outside the cars and on location due to the confinement of space availability. Although there were a number of editing mistakes Academy Award for Best Film Editing the following year at the Oscars. Along with the green VW, several other vehicles were used in order to control traffic at the more dangerous intersections such as the white 68 Pontiac Firebird that also appeared several times during the chase. The stun of the Charger crashing took some engineering to perform as it required the Charger to be seen colliding into a gas station and blow up upon impact to attach the Charger and the Mustang together in order for the Mustang to side tow the Charger without the need of a driver due to the high risk of the stunt. It was stunt legend Kerry Lofton who would perform this maneuver and was also an uncredited coordinator for the chase. Lofton was revered in Hollywood for his motor vehicle work that spanned over 60 years. Of the main cars used for the chase, one of the Dodge Chargers was destroyed in the crash while it is debated if more than two Chargers were actually purchased and what their fate was. Some have claimed to own one of the other cars used, yet no confirmation has fully been made and their authenticity is up for debate. 
One of these cars was at one time owned by Arnold Welch, who while restoring his 68 Charger, discovered some makeshift holes drilled into the floor and parts of the body that seemed to match up some behind the scenes stills and footage showing where cameras were mounted onto the car. Again, this had not been fully confirmed, but the car would eventually be sold into the hands of a collector who has continued the story and is hoping to one day confirm the Charger's connection to the film. However, the two Highland Green Mustang GT390 fastbacks that were used in the film had been eventually found and had their own story after the film's production wrapped as they were sold off and eventually found their way into the hands of private owners and one was even discovered in a junkyard in Mexico. On January 10th, 2020, the unrestored of the two had been sold at auction for 3.4 million US dollars with the final sale price of 3.74 million dollars, making it one of the most expensive movie cars ever to be sold just behind the original 1960s TV Batmobile, which was sold for $4.62 million. Lasting 10 minutes and 53 seconds, from the beginning of the scene where Bullet is dropped off to the end when the killers are seen burning, those minutes of cinema history are still praised and those who brought the chase to completion and performed the stunts remembered for changing the way Hollywood and the world would make car chases forever. Boxes.